Good morning. Uh, Good
Hello. Hello, Chair. Oh, yeah, I was kicked out. I don't know what happened. All right. Um, good, good morning, everyone. Uh, morning, morning, uh, are Chair. we good to go? Yeah. Um, I thank you, colleagues. I saw the um, presentation um, up earlier on. We would like to, we've already greeted each other, uh, MEC and your team. We were in early at nine o'clock this morning on another matter. Uh, we are working hard. They are cool. So we would like to welcome the MEC. Um, <laughs> Cooperative governance and tradition and this team the X meeting where <clears throat> there was a miscommunication which certainly did not sit well with us and um, the presentation has been consolidated into one and uh, MEC we are aware that there was a cabinet engagement but uh, it good and well that you've been able to request other colleague to represent. Uh, you chairing the uh, meeting yet to, to chair, which was a cabinet uh, commitment. So without any further ado, because we already all are aware of the issues which have brought us here, going to immediately then request the MEC and his team to make the presentation and then we'll the questions. So the MEC, over to you. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Chair, and uh, good morning uh, to you and to other honorable members of uh, the committee and the officials that are part of uh, the meeting. And um, indeed, Honorable Chair, I had to uh, request a colleague of mine, another MEC, to chair the meeting so that I can prioritize the meeting. Appreciating uh, the regrettable uh, incident uh, of last week, which I, I apologize of the miscommunication led to the committee rescheduling. And uh, I do appreciate uh, that uh, the committee is giving us this opportunity to present uh, the report as uh, uh, was uh, directed by the committee. And I'm glad that uh, we did um, comply by submitting the report same day in the afternoon. Uh, as was directed by the committee that we submit, we did it the same day. Honorable Chair, with me, I'm um, uh, with the HOD uh, for COCTA, Mr. Fani, as part of uh, the delegation, leading administration, and I've got DDG for local government, developmental local government, uh, Hoboji, and I've got a legal advisor, uh, Mr. Makumu of COCTA, and uh, Mr. Mdoti as parliamentary liaison officer in the MEC's office. Uh, without wasting time, Honorable Chair, I'll now hand over to the HOD to proceed and make uh, the presentation. Thank you, uh, Honorable Chair. Thank you, MEC. Uh, good morning, Honorable Members of the Committee. I hope I'm ordered. Sorry, can I just interrupt you? Sorry, sorry can I just interrupt you? Just, just uh, one second, uh, uh, Honorable uh, HOD. MEC, one sound, second. Your, your sound is terrible as we can't really hear what you are saying and our chairs to kick off the platform too. The sound. Uh, all right, um, I'm, I'm back. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, I, I think in the, the, the gist of what the MEC was saying <clears throat> is that uh, he was apologizing for last week and that they have submitted and was handing over to the HOD to make the presentation. The MEC will come back uh, at the end of Chair, the we have a problem with the sound. We right, can't HOD? Hear. We can't hear. We have a problem Thank with you, sound. We can't hear. Just, HOD, just one second. There's, there's feedback from somewhere mm -hmm. that I'm picking up. And as no matter, it's uh, like bundles of joy. It's like you're very far away. That we can't hear you properly. How? Oh. But Honorable Dex, am I audible now? I'm trying to adjust myself as well. This You're like very far away, like in Uganda or somewhere. Oh, far away. No, no, no. I'm in Uganda. All right, just do this. HOT. <laughs> then, yeah. Uh, yeah, HOT, over to you. Thank you, Honorable Chair. I hope I'm audible. 
Do you hear me, Honorable Chair? Okay, thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Honorable members, uh, good morning, MEC. Uh, first, I think the on my yeah. side, uh, Honorable Chair, it will be important for me to, uh, as well as an accounting officer, to do an apology on what happened last week. Uh, it was not even a, an element of trying to undermine the committee, but the, 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 the mistake that we have done is not to retract the first presentation because uh, we, when the meeting was postponed, we got a chance of uh, phoning security agencies so that we can give up the report. So our mistake was not to, to retract the first one. Uh, so I want to just apologize for that and I've accounted for that to the MEC and I, I place my apologies as well in front of the committee. <laughs> The, the, the presentation uh, uh, is a presentation for standing committee on public accounts, is then Cape Municipal Investigation Update, uh, which is supposed, is supposed to be done by MEC, MEC Ngata, 18 November, 2020. Next slide. The, that's the background, Honorable Chair, without wasting time, introduction, background purposes, 106.1 B Municipalities Investigation Update, National Prosecution Authority Case Update, SIU Municipal Investigation Update, DPCI Hawks Municipal Investigation Update. Um, those are the, the, the introduction. And then uh, on the introduction, the Eastern Cape has the nine municipalities, categorizes two metros, six district municipalities, and 31 local municipalities. This report relates to Municipalities identified by SCOPA, including Buffalo City Metropolitan Municipality and Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality, six districts, uh, Alfred Nzo, O.R. Tambo, Joe Kabi, Krisani, Amatole District Municipality, and 31 local municipalities. The report focuses on consequent management measures implemented pursuant to investigation conducted at the municipalities in accordance with good governance pillar of back to basics and precepts of section 1061 of the Municipal Systems Act Act, Act, 2000, uh, Act 32 of 2000. The investigation include those conducted in terms of section 106.1b of the Systems Act under the auspices of the Eastern Cape Cocta, true sourcing of, uh, of funding from national treasure. Following the finalization of investigation in terms of section 106.1b, reports are tabled uh, the MEC with an action plan to relevant municipalities who are then required to implement such recommendations whilst the department monitors the implementation of such action plans. Notwithstanding the referrals made to law enforcement agencies like SIU, DPCI, as well as other, as well as the progressive, uh, as well as progress made towards prosecution of criminal cases against officials. National Cocta is establishing a database for officials that are being dismissed because of criminal and or misconduct case in accordance with the guidance and precepts of section 5757A of Local Government Municipal Systems Act, that is Act of 32 of 2000, the Systems Act as amended in 2011. Then two, section 171 of Local Government Municipal Finance Management Act, which is Act number 56 of 2003, and three, and schedule two of Local Government Regulation and Appointment and Conditions of Employment of Senior Managers, uh, published on the 17th of January, 2014, in the government notice number 21, under government gazette number 37245, forbids the employment of persons who have been dismissed for misconduct. Though we did not manage to get an update from all the list of 27 municipalities, however, we continue to engage with affected municipalities and law enforcement agencies with a view to get up an update in due course. A clear picture depicting the progress made by law enforcement agencies within the provinces therefore shared in this presentation for your consideration. Um, slide, next slide. Okay. Just next slide. On good governance uh, in municipalities uh, depends on the effective management uh, of a uh, and administrative competence as well as collective will of municipal councils to work for progressive change. The challenge facing some of our municipality councils is failure to provide quality and sustainable services within the broader context of growth and development. In this regard, the department is calling on all councillors as public representatives to demonstrate unwavering, unwavering commitment to fight corruption and promote self and hate the environment 
in accordance to the, with the Republic of South Africa Constitution 1996 and 11 legislation. The only collision council in the Eastern Cape is the Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality. The collision government in Nelson Mandela poses challenges in as far as taking council resolution. Due to diversity of political affiliations, the council deadlocked taking resolutions, and this has a negative impact and on delivery of basic services. A typical example of this is the adoption of the budget then, which was uh, adopted long after the legislative framework. When the MEC intervened, then the budget was adopted after that. The city has also undergone, uh, undergone and still is going through considerable political instability, which has affected the administration. All councils in the Eastern Cape had at least four ordinary council meetings during 2019-20 and 2018-19 financial year as legislated. The period from 2016-17 to 2019-20 financial years indicates the mayoral committee's acts have been in place. The trend in the Eastern Cape has been that, uh, uh, that all mayoral committee acts have said at least four times in each of their four mentioned years. As at the end of 2018-19 uh, uh, financial year, all municipalities within the Eastern Cape had established functional audit committees and internal audit units. However, internal audit governance is still a challenge in the province, and the maturity level of municipalities in terms of internal audit is still lagging behind, which means sometimes the audit committees would not be listened when they give an advice, uh, so that when AG comes in, some of the things would have been corrected. Only two municipalities in the province failed to submit the annual financial statement to the AG on time during 2017-18 financial year, namely Saki Sizo and Sunday's River Valley local municipality. There are 14 delegated municipalities out of 36 that have, that have not established disciplinary boards. With the boards, when municipalities uh, put challenges of uh, managers, uh, which the cases must be referred to. The Matole District Municipality and local municipalities are the most challenged with no mun municipality having established to date. Common reasons for non-establishment of disciplinary boards are that, are that items for the establishment of disciplinary boards are yet to be taken to council. And in instances where the item has been presented to council, the council resolution confirming the establishment of the board has not been submitted by municipalities to provincial treasurer. Provincial treasurer assists municipalities with the establishment of the disciplinary boards by unpacking the financial and misconduct regulations through provincial workshops and individual engagement with municipalities. Provincial treasurer also assists municipalities by facilitating training for financial misconduct uh, disciplinary boards on their role and responsibilities. A total number of 12 financial year uh, municipalities, a total number, uh, sorry, a, a total number of 12 financial misconduct cases were reported have been investigated during the reporting period. The purpose of this report was outlined by the chair of the SCOPA as to establish whether consequent management measures have been implemented at the affected municipalities in relation to the investigation conducted. Uh, uh, investigation 1061B, investigation update. Uh, the municipality, that is the Amathati investigation status, concluded through National Treasury by KPMG, action taken by MEC, the investigation was tabled uh, to council and the Committee for Implementation, Law Enforcement Agency referral was also made for, 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 for the criminal matters. The allegations that were there, construction of internal streets of Lungis location, to construction of streets at, of Ndakana, construction of Case Kama Wook, uh, uh, sports field, appointment of uh, arms, which is a company, municipal vehicle abuse, security services, catering services. The Namatole District Municipality phase one is concluded, which is done by a service provider appointed uh, by the department this time, open water forensics, uh, approval for phase two. There's an approval already for phase two, although the, the service provided difficulties for uh, difficulties uh, in, in finding cooperation to the municipality to an extent that uh, the reason why there are delays, the MEC is now issued out a gazette and after a gazette, now we have, uh, we have got subpoenas. Now the investigator is going to get in there for phase two. And if there's reluctance for cooperation, the subpoenas would be issued. Um, the, the allegations there were projects assassin terminology used uh, uh, since the investigation is still underway. That, that's a, a, a project assassin investigation has not been completed. Phase one was completed in relation to corruption and maladministration. 
Then Blue Crane Root Local Municipality Cocktail uh, finding uh, concluded. Then the MEC kept the investigation with the petitioners because the petitioners complaining about issues in the municipality. This was emerging from a petition relating to HR issues of the municipality tender and pension benefits, where even workers were complaining that their pension benefits are not paid over. Uh, the report was tabled there with an action plan. Buffalo City phase one is concluded by integrated forensic uh, approval for phase two has been done. They are embarking in, in now on phase two. Uh, uh, the project is still yet not completed. Um, uh, so uh, we are going to go to phase two in terms of dealing with the uh, Buffalo City. Um, next slide. Um, then Dr. Bears not there. Now, with respect to this municipality, the department does not have records as to whether the municipality is investigated. However, law enforcement agencies at the municipality has been alerted for an update in this regard. This means, uh, Honorable Chair, we, we, we don't have an investigation report in the municipality, but what we did to brief the report, we tried to look at uh, law enforcement agencies to brief us whether there are any cases reporting to, uh, reported to them so that we can have a record at, at hand. Then uh, Emalateni, which is the Eastern Cape Emalateni local municipality, the report was concluded through National Treasury by Deloitte. The investigation was tabled by MEC to Council and Committee for Implementation and referral to SAPS. The service provider was paid for installation of non-functioning uh, high mass lights and traffic uh, department building. And Nobo uh, concluded through National Treasury by a company called Funduzi. The investigation was tabled by the MEC to Council and Community for Implementation and Referral to SAPS. Investigation was in relation to MIG projects, construction of six access roads and infrastructure. Uh, those roads were Bekileni, Kangaleka Road, Kribini, Kwatija Road, Twekwem Swini Access Road, Ngudwa Namzangweni Road, Newton Stateni Road, and, and Zunguzini access roads. These roads were declared as roads that have been done, but the investigation picked up that there were no roads that have been done of this nature. But on this Ennobo, National Treasury is still going to complete other roads because there were 12, they have investigated these ones, so they will finalize the other, the other roads. In Ogum Kijima, concluded to National Treasury by Deloitte, tabling of the investigation is still outstanding. However, a plan is being developed to table all the remaining investigation with the municipality. I think the COVID had a challenge. Uh, I think the MEC now is taking a, 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 a decision to present this uh, virtually uh, to municipalities, all those outstanding reports. Mostly related to irregular appointments of service provider resulting to irregular and fruitless and wasteful expenditure. Great Kai local municipality is concluded to national treasury by Koboto. The investigation findings were tabled to council and the community referral was made to relevant law enforcement agencies for criminal charges and recoveries. Uh, allegations is the Happy Valley Community Hall, Prince of Sportsfield Phase 2, Mayoral Golf Day event, Weleha uh, Plangani Sportsfield 2, Comca Sportsfield 2. Uh, these sports fields were not finalized, but money was paid. The Mayoral Golf issue relates to a Mayoral Golf, which was indicated as has happened, but the the investigation found out that there was no mayoral golf uh, event. In Mozahil local municipality, COPTA investigation was concluded with a recommendation to do a forensic as approved previously by National Treasury. Tabling of the report to Council of the Municipality referral was also made to National Treasury for forensic investigation issues in relation to political issues, demolition of house in new rest location, lack service delivery, rate payers issues, irregular procurement processes, irregular human resource matters, corruption and fraud, criminal issues, financial matters, hawkers uh, matters. And this uh, report, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, the department has done a preliminary report. Uh, National Treasury was there, but there was no cooperation to National Treasury. The matters that were investigated uh, preliminarily were handed over as well to National Treasury, but MEC was under pressure to present the preliminary report whilst it is not conclusive. He presented that criminal report uh, in order to you know to create stability in the municipality. But National Treasury is still going to go there because uh, they were kicked out. There was no cooperation. And then we get Joe Kabi uh, uh, investigation not concluded. Notice letter was sent to Joe Kabi in relation to procurement uh, corruption in relation to procurement of pipes through emergency order. 
uh, the, the, the investigation is still uh, uh, underway. And then KSD concluded through National Treasury by PWC, the investigation was taped by the MEC to counsel and community with an action plan and law enforcement agencies referral were also made for criminal matters. Let me mention this, when I'm talking about uh, referral, MEC did not only depend uh, on the council to refer the reports to SAPS, he also referred the reports by himself and meet the commissioner of the province and uh, uh, given them the, the, the files to do an investigation. The allegations, the fleet management contract, the task eight uh, project of 4 million, which increased to 87 million. Um, in this fleet management contract, uh, the municipality is accused of buying uh, uh, some cars uh, for certain uh, uh, leaders uh, in the municipality. And then the task rate, it was money that uh, was then uh, paid uh, to workers. Follow up, then uh, action plan, follow up letters drafted for update of the action plan uh, implementation. On this one, all those municipalities that were uh, MEC tabled the report, uh, MEC has written letters to them to get an update. We only got uh, three responses, uh, Great Kai, uh, Emma Lacheni, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, at KSD, um, um, where other municipalities did not respond. Um, and then the MEC has now instructed uh, the legal team to draft a a, a legal uh, a instruction to enforce municipalities to implement uh, those uh, recommendations. There are these municipalities, Koha, Makana, Mbashe, Klon, Klon, Ngoma, with respect of this, the department does not have records to whether these municipalities were investigated. However, law enforcement agencies and the municipality has been alerted for an update in this regard. We know SIU has got an investigation at Mbashe and uh, uh, that investigation was done by SIU. Uh, we advised, there was a letter written to the MEC requesting for an advice for a particular action that needs to be taken. MEC referred the matter back by responding and giving guidance on how council should handle that matter. And that was a matter that relates to a, a, a yellow fleet uh, in the area of uh, uh, Muswa. And then uh, <clears throat> Nelson Mandela Bay Metro. Um, it, also Nelson Mandela Bay Metro for us in the department, we don't have our own records of investigating them, but uh, there are reports that were done directly by National Treasury to them, and uh, which uh, are supposed to be implemented. And we know that the other reports are with Hawks and SIU, which they were consulted in. Uh, when the communication was done with those law enforcement agencies, it was very difficult probably to get some of because uh, the report, uh, as their indication was that now the investigation is at a sensitive stage. Now, uh, Mushua LM, I think there was an indication as well on it uh, for 2014 report. The only, we don't have a report, only the MEC has started now to start its uh, investigation in Mushua, but I think as well there's resistance and there's a process that we're, we're undertaking to finalize that. PSJ for St. John's concluded through National Treasury by KPMG investigation not yet to be tabled, as I've indicated, it falls under those that would be tabled by MEC virtually now. It's an abuse of regulation 32 of MFA, MFMA and other related offenses. Uh, that uh, yellow fleet, uh, the performance management, which was done as well uh, by regulation 32, it's a matter that is key there. Uh, and then uh, Raymond Mkaba concluded through National Treasury by Koboto. Uh, the report uh, investigation not yet tabled by the MEC awaiting the handing over of the report by National Treasury for implementation and referral. Uh, on them is irregular procurement of yellow fleet plan, irregular appointment of staff and other corrupt uh, related uh, issues. Then Saki C's the forensic uh, investigation was approved through National Treasury to be conducted by ENS. Um, the action taken not concluded as yet uh, because uh, in Saki C's as well, we are awaiting uh, for, 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 for a report to be tabled uh, to us for MEC to be able to uh, to go there and table such a report. On Sarah Batman, with respect of this municipality, the department does not have records of whether these municipalities were investigated. I'll, I'll say this all the time, Chair, because uh, what we have done that beefed up the report was as well to try and connect, not to say this statement only, but communicating with other agencies. So those agencies, we sometimes get a response, but when the case is at a sensitive state, because it is not our case, they would say to us, Yes, we're investigating, but the case is at a sensitive level. 
Then Walter Sisulu ML, a preliminary investigation was conducted to National Treasury by BDO. A plan is being developed to table all the remaining investigation with the municipality. RT, it was related to RTP, house allocation, corruption in relation to procurement processes and irregular appointments. And then uh, NPA municipal cases prosecution update. Now, Honorable Chair, what we did uh, without saying to the committee, no, we don't know about this, though we struggled. We tried to call all these agencies, those that were able to give us the information in areas where we don't have records, they did so. You would see that there's Musa, uh, Muma local municipality, the state versus Stephen Willingman, consultant and three others. The case involved 10 irregularities relating to the construction of Kwanzana access roads. And, and the tender amount was plus minus 2 million. The education committee awarded uh, that to Kwanzana project uh, 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 and Sans construction. The company was not, uh, uh, the issue was not able to be the evaluation committee. Claims submitted and money paid work done, not according to required specifications. Uh, uh, three suspects have been charged. The matter now on this one is before the court. And then uh, King Sabata Dalingebo, the state versus Luanda Makwentu, Songhelwa, and two others. The matter involves fraud and corruption relating to appointments. Uh, human resource manager was approached by the member of the public. It is alleged that the said members paid money for employment uh, to one of the officials of, of King Sabata Dalingebo municipality. The members were paying amounts ranging to 500 to uh, 5,000. If a member of public was to be a cleaner, he or she had to pay an amount of 500 in cash or in the bank account. And the man, uh, uh, and for a for, for, for a police officer, it was about for a manager, the police officer, it was about 5,000 in cash or deposited in the bank. A financial care of 120,000 was suffered. The matter is before the court, and uh, there are charges of fraud and corruption. Musa district municipality, you would see Musa is not a district municipality, but this is how it has been written in their record. So we felt that we should not uh, uh, change that because this is how it's written in their records. The state versus Ndombo to Mumbotri, the matter involves allegation of fraud and corruption against an employee of the municipality uh, with that amount of 2.563315 which was suffered and the matter is before the court and he has been postponed for trial. And Nobo, the state versus uh, Ombakaz, Mlamdi and eight others, the matter relating to allegation of fraud, demanding of fraudulent payments that were made by Nobo, local municipal to bank accounts of companies and individuals for services that were not rendered and goods that were not delivered to the municipal. Police investigation that six employees of the municipal were involved in the scam, the monies were paid into the bank account of companies of their relatives, and our friends and also personal bank accounts of their friends and our relatives. The matter is before the High Court. And then uh, you go to uh, Alfred Nzo uh, District Municipality, uh, sorry, Ngobo, the state uh, versus um, Zingisi Fubu, the matter relating to allegation of fraud, uh, emanating from fraudulent payment, which was made by Ngobo Municipality to bank account of company, which accused was sold, which was uh, which was alleged as a sole director for services that were rendered, then goods that were not delivered to the municipal. The financial prejudice suffered is 363,744. The matter is before the court as well. Alfred Zo, the state versus Lee Zotaikecha, and two others. Project payments were made by Alfred Zo, the municipal, to various bank accounts belonging to various companies. The total amount with the Alfred Zo, the municipal, was defrauded, was about 28 million. The matter is before the court and it has been postponed for trial. Buffalo City Metropolitan Municipality is the state versus the uh, Vuyo Zambodla and another. The matter involved tender regulations relating to Confederation, uh, Con Confederation Cup and the World Cup, uh, uh, which is uh, the, 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 the supply chain processes were not followed in rewarding the tenders. Uh, the, they are facing charges of fraud and corruption with uh, an amount of 490,000, which was suffered by municipality. The case is before uh, the court. Then the state versus Wendimar Kageza Kalat and 16 others, same in Buffalo City. The matter involves fraud and corruption relating to awarding of tenders, a variety of mineral projects based on budget that was uh, provided by the Director of Communication Services, Ms. Kageza Kalat, which uh, totaled to amount of uh, 
that amount, uh, the mineral project include uh, grass cutting, purification in legal areas and bush cutting around Island and King Lamstown. Uh, the amount which has been defrauded to the municipalities plus minus 11 million because of different uh, votes. The man was taken from this end. The accused are facing charges of fraud and corruption and contravention, contravention of the MFMA. The matter is before the court. Muma, uh, the state versus uh, uh, Terrace Ndutu and 17 others. Uh, the matter involves fraud and corruption and contravention of MFMA uh, relating to awarding of tenders. Accused four and seven uh, to 18 were members of the PEC, PEC of Muma municipality. They awarded tenders in contravention of the MFMA to companies. I choose two and six, which are represented by I choose one and five investigations revealed that kickbacks were paid to the late municipal manager, Tansi, and, uh, and, uh, which is, uh, and I choose three and four. Uh, the municipal manager there uh, uh, was Tansi and they passed on. Um, and then the next one is uh, Lukanji. Lu Lu uh, the state versus Andy Suem Kwebe and two others. The matter involves fraud, theft relating to transfer of money from the municipality account to various unknown accounts. The total amount that was transferred is 693, 338 and five. Uh, the are facing charges of fraud and theft. The matter is before the court postponed for trial. Buffalo City, Buffalo City uh, Waste Tender Regulator is awarded to non-deserving service provided by flouting municipal supply chain management regulation and contravention of the Municipal Management Act. Uh, um, uh, determined deserving service providers. Financial prejudice there, which is suffered, is 28 million. The matter is before court on charges of fraud, contravention, and MFA is postponed for trial. Now, on this one, if you see Honorable Chair, there was then some kind of a reluctancy to release the entire information on that part. But uh, suffice to say, we managed then to get the other part of the detail of the case because uh, uh, the reluctance of whether the information is going to leak or maybe we'll approach those people. So there was some reluctance. Then, uh, then the Tata uh, 2, you would see the names are old, the cases are old. Tata uh, to District Municipality, the state versus in service city, Dennis and eight others. It is alleged that the Tata to District Municipality in care regular expenditure amounting to 1.058600. The internal audit report further reflected that the above mentioned regular expenditure was a result of a circumvention of procurement policy of Tata to District Municipality during appointment of awarding of work to some suppliers. This action uh, construed as gross negligence and criminal offense in terms of the MFMA. X56 of 2003. The matter is before court and has been postponed for trial. Queens Municipality, the state versus uh, Chantel, Leon Williams, and another. The matter is appointment of irregularities, um, the various allegations, alleged criminal uh, activities, civil investigation identified that the head of department appointed accused one as municipal manager of Queens, although did not have qualification, further increased salary and bonus payments and accused one was done irregularly uh, it created fruitless and racial expenditure. The municipality suffered fruitless prejudice of that uh, amount 1.2. The matter is before the court. SIU municipal investigation update. Uh, proclamation uh, up to six of 2005, up to seven 2005, chair. There are those uh, municipalities listed there. Uh, and uh, the indication is that all investigations have been concluded and reports have been submitted. Now the reports, as per indication, they are submitted to the president. And after the president has agreed to the reports, the SIU takes the reports back and uh, investigates then or arrest where there is a matter of arrest. And then that's the date of proclamation. Then again, proclamation R50, uh, Kaukeni municipality. There are these municipalities, Nelson Mandela as well. Raid Kai, Buffalo City Metro, Amatlati Local Municipality, Alfred and so. So there are SIU investigations as well, uh, which are in progress. And uh, those reports, as I said, are handed over to the president after investigation. Then if agreed to, then the SIU will start uh, uh, arresting where there are areas that they need to arrest. And then Alfred and Zoe is also investigation concluded there. Raymond Klava investigation has been concluded. But a local municipality investigation has been concluded. Uh, Hawks investigations update. 
um, update received on the 30th of September 2020, around 21 municipal cases of corruption and related offenses were under investigation. These investigations relate to various municipalities of the province. Cox is currently updating their database and will communicate statistics to us in due course. Highlights being our term with district municipality door to door COVID 19 campaign concluded. A number of investigations are ongoing at Nelson Mandela Metro Bay, Amatole district municipality, as well investigations in progress. Uh, consequent uh, challenges, possible solutions. Uh, MEC recently wrote letters to affected municipalities requesting progress on the implementation of the action plan. Great Kai and Amala Shane responded. Legal consideration is underway of dealing with all those that are not cooperative. Uh, lockdown slowed down the process of tabling of reports to municipalities. The process of resuscitating the table of outstanding reports is underway. COCTA is committed to support municipalities in, in implementing forensic report outcomes, and only Great Kai and Amala Shane requested such support. All table investigations are ended over to law enforcement agencies for pursuing of criminal matters and possible uh, uh, recoveries. Okay. Then uh, this is municipal officials misconduct prescript chair. I don't know whether I should go about it, but uh, we felt that uh, uh, this is what we are giving as, as a direction as well to municipalities when they are dealing with these issue areas of uh, misconduct, of dishonesty and indicate a period uh, that must expire. Remember, the biggest problem is that when municipalities, when I'm appointed in a municipality, I'm able, when I'm, I, I create a problem, I'm able to go and join another municipality. And that's what is happening. That's what has been happening, which then the MEC as well took it as that as a responsibility of writing to them. Municipality that has employed a person who left challenges where he was uh, going forward. I think this is a, an indication of municipal conduct prescripts, which I'm not going to uh, uh, bore you, Chairperson, a guide. Again, uh, the same chair, which is indicating the period that must expire before a person gets reappointed. We are trying to reflect that, and this is a guidance we're giving as well to municipalities. Uh, same chair on the issues of breach of code of conduct in categorization of all those uh, misconducts who are indicating which years can a person then can go back to the system. Uh, conclusion, uh, most municipalities' recommendations to COCTA formulate an action plan for attention uh, to, of municipal councils and all relevant parties. Due to the number of municipalities supported through either 154 and or 139 uh, through administration, the need for COCTA to do investigation arise, then the budget issues seem to be a challenge sometimes. Most municipalities uh, has given the investigation to COCTA Though they have a capacity and the committee seem not to be comfortable with municipalities invoking its investigation and prefer COCTA to invoke investigation. So in a municipal environment, when there's a problem, communities would say, you can't inv investigate yourselves. We don't trust that. Leave COCTA to investigate. So due to higher, high volume of municipal cases, this has tended, uh, tended to affect the turnaround time between all law enforcement agencies and stakeholders and creates a backlog. Uh, MEC was always checking from law enforcement. Law enforcement agencies have got a number of cases in front of them besides these ones that were referring to them. Where this investigation has been concluded, there is a slow implementation of the finding and local government anti-corruption strategy has contributed positively towards the hotline cases. And there's been a decline of reporting uh, uh, because we've got a uh, 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 focusing on four pillars prevention, which is awareness campaign, detection, auditing and fraud prevention plan, investigation and resolution prosecution. A local government anti-corruption forum has been formed with this tier code to facilitate dialogue between law enforcement agencies, national and provincial department, and all role players within the spheres of local government to assist with better coordination of enforcement and preventative measures. Eastern Cape Cocta has developed joint team approach in dealing with mutual petitions these teams has assisted in, in ensuring that all the facts are either validated and were otherwise refuted through this multidisciplinary approach, comprised of representatives from infrastructure, legal, uh, uh, municipal capacity, uh, municipal admin, municipal development finance, which is dealing with unauthorized, fruitless, and wasteful expenditure, and anti corruption uh, units. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Chair. That's the end of the report. Thank you, MEC. 
<clears throat> right, MEC, let's send over to you if there's any concluding remarks you'd like to make to the presentation. Uh, thanks, uh, Honorable Chair. Um, there, there, there are a few com uh, points that I would want to uh, underline and bring to the attention of the committee. First uh, is uh, the pushback that we get when these investigations, uh, Section 106, uh, of the Systems Act uh, when uh, we decide to invoke that section. Because A of the section uh, provides that uh, the MSC must request information if there are such allegations against the municipality. And B of the same uh, section says that if the MSC has a, 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 a reasons to believe that uh, fraud and corruption has been committed, the MSC must investigate. And because we've got information already, at times in many of these instances. And therefore there is no point to go to B. We make a decision to go to A. We then, I then make a decision to go to B and invoke a, and uh, inform the municipality that I'm invoking this section to, info, to investigate you. And there has been an issue even with the MSC before me for municipalities to think that, uh, you know, for them to be investigated, they must give a permission or they must prescribe how the MSC approaches that allegations against them. And uh, they consider those investigations to be illegal and uh, they are not cooperating. Hence, then we take, I'm taking the route of gazetting so that you compel people. To this extent, I went to an extent of requesting a, a senior council opinion, which agreed that uh, you know, the, the law does provide for the MEC because uh, to exercise this power. And therefore, those who are alleged to have done wrong, they cannot prescribe how the MEC does this thing. And the second point, is the politicization of the whole uh, 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 investigation reports. Sometimes it depends which uh, uh, you know, uh, factions are dominant in the municipality. Sometimes the people who have done wrong, they belong to a dominant faction. And therefore, it becomes even difficult even to convene council so that the MEC can go and table uh, the investigation report because the dominant uh, you know, faction is, is a stumbling block. That is the politicization of the whole thing. And because of that factionalization, uh, the report is uh, treated collectively, blocking a due process, even if it has been tabled. People will then begin to challenge and represent those who are alleged to have done a wrong thing. And the approach has been saying, here is an action plan with findings and, and, and recommendations of what must be done. Uh, yours is to allow due process. If anyone thinks that uh, uh, they've got, uh, you know, they are being, uh, you know, treated unfairly, they must go to a relevant platform than to hold council and the communities that are complaining into ransom because you want to use council to defend certain individuals that are alleged. So due process must be allowed. The other side of that thing is that uh, the petitioners, uh, at times, they would want to assume to take over. Uh, the role of council, the petitioners. One thing, if uh, it says that, uh, you know, so-and-so has been appointed as a director with no qualifications, uh, once you table the report, they want that person out of that municipality. And we've been saying it is not the case. There must be a due process that must be allowed so that that person must be go to that relevant platform and appropriate decision is taken. And therefore, there is a need to allow space of bodies that are authorized to take certain measures they must be allowed space to do so than for, for petitioners or communities wanting to take over uh, uh, that process. Uh, the other one, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, uh, which I will run, the, the, the delay, therefore, in the, in the, in the tabling uh, is not owed only to COVID, but also owed to this pushback that I'm talking about, that there seems to be a fractionalization of how these matters are treated and therefore there will be a, a pushback depending uh, on to this. That's why we're calling them uh, for the professionalization and uh, the, 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 the anchoring on all what we're doing on rule of law and due process uh, be respected. I just wish you for the benefit of the committee to mention the last one, uh, which we did uh, in Waltashi Solo Municipality, which we forgot to include here where um, we investigated allegations against four councillors who were facilitating land invasions and selling uh, the land. Uh, they were investigated uh, by ourselves 
and uh, you know they were given an opportunity and they have since been removed as councillors as part of taking action. That is another shock uh, that then seeks to you know delegitimize even COCTA and COCTA MEC as a role player in enforcing the code of conduct because people are not used uh, you know uh, for COCTA to taking action against councillors and therefore uh, there, there's been this pushback around this question. We effectively removed them and uh, hence uh, there were vacancies and uh, they, they, were, they were filled then in the last uh, in the last by elections. And again in KSD, uh, a councillor council there uh, was alleged to have been taken money about 25,000 25, from an unemployed woman, uh, you know, uh, promising that you will give him an RTP house. And uh, this woman used even some of the money taken from the kids who uh, qualify for nurses and they would give part of the portion, portion to the mother. And therefore she would put these monies together to give to this councillor with the hope of getting a house. And the uh, council delayed in acting in KSD. And uh, we acted because they delayed, because sometimes they think that when they don't act, COCTA must fold their arms, which is completely wrong because the COCTA is a role player in enforcing the code of conduct. So we acted on that one. Uh, but again, the preoccupation of some councils, including this one, would be to defend the so-called public representatives than to consider the interest of those they claim to represent. So we acted on this one, and uh, but he went uh, to court to appeal. So we, we are opposing uh, 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 that. So honorable chair, these are the things that we're facing as we as we as we do uh, 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 this work. And thanks, uh, honorable chair. All right, let me see. Thank you very much. Uh, let us go to uh, questions. Honorable Hatebe had his hand up. Uh, speaking about by-elections and uh, oh, honourable tax, uh, I'm in Kandla to celebrate. So, right, honourable Hatebe, over to you. Oh, so you're celebrating in Kandla? <laughs> yeah, salut, Davin, you All right, over to you, Bob, sure. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. The test all our award in Kandla. <laughs> uh, no, those are sad and disturbing news indeed. Chair, um, thank you so much uh, to the presentation uh, from the MEC. Um, MEC, to a certain extent, I understand your, your predicament and quagmire uh, in what you have just alluded to. Having said that, uh, Honorable MEC, I am not a legal expert, but I was once taught that ignorance of the law has no excuse. And those municipal council who seem to defy and question the legislation as enshrined in the Systems Act uh, 106 ought to have to be dealt with accordingly. Uh, we are here as SCOPA. Unfortunately, we are not in a position to engage or entertain any uh, uh, factional battles within municipal councils. Ours as SCOPA is to deal with financial compliance and where there are instances of uh, uh, maladministration and misappropriations of uh, a public purse, what we want to see is uh, uh, consequence management applied to the latter. We want to get a sense of how much was misappropriated, by who, what were the action taken, what was the sanction, who are the officials involved, uh, uh, what position do they occupy, uh, uh, whether they are senior or junior within those municipalities, uh, and how many criminal cases have been referred to the relevant authorities, are there any litigations to recover some of the money? That's what we are interested in as SCOPA. Unfortunately, um, your presentation has given us uh, an indication of what we are dealing with, but it is not detailed. We do not have a sense uh, of the issues that I've highlighted. Uh, Honorable Chair, if I may, you have uh, indicated cases that have been concluded 
as per section 106, subsection 1B. But uh, the report does not tell us how many officials were implicated and what positions do they hold, uh, uh, those officials. That's the information we're not privy to, yet such a report was concluded. Uh, yes, it was concluded, table to come. We need to know what is uh, 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 what, what are these municipal council dealing with? Who are the, uh, uh, the culprits in those municipalities? We want to have that sense and feel that indeed there's consequence management. We don't know uh, how many uh, referrals uh, in terms of criminal investigation. What is disturbing is that there are almost more than 10 municipalities, O.R. Tambo, our hero, Nelson Mandela Bay, Uha, Makana, Mbashe, Mfronto, Bayas Nodie, Sarah Batman. You are saying to us uh, the department does not have records of any investigation. Now the question will be, who keeps and supposed to furnish you with those investigations? And if it's municipalities, uh, when did you request such information? Your, 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 your report does not have dates. Now I'm interested in knowing in almost over 10 municipalities where you do not have records, when have you requested that information from those municipalities? And when are you expecting to receive such information? It is not enough to say you have requested, but for us to be able to see that there's movement, give us dates and whether or not we have indicated time in which you want that information to, to be available. In Okumkijimi, as well as uh, here, I must be politically correct in my, if I'm pronouncing this word, in Zahil. Uh, you, you, you have indicated that the report has been concluded yet not tabled. When was it concluded? There are timeframes in terms of the Municipal Systems Act uh, that prescribe certain things that ought to be done. The 90 days where you need to conclude. We don't have information. So all those that are outstanding and have not yet been tabled to, to council, we need to know when did you conclude your report and when are you planning to, uh, uh, to uh, provide such information to those municipal councils. We understand the issue of lockdown and the uh, a challenge in, 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 in uh, affecting some of, of this. The, your, your PSJ, again, concluded, not yet tabled. We, we need to, 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 to have a sense what, what, what is happening. Uh, Chair, uh, in uh, I think it's slide 26 uh, that deals with consequence management. You have uh, indicated to us that letters were sent to these municipalities uh, uh, requesting a, a, a progress report on, on their action plan. Yet again, we are told that it's only two municipalities that, that have uh, 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 responded positively. Tell us how many municipalities which are the name and shame those municipalities that have not responded? Have they indicated the reasons why uh, uh, before you even uh, resort to issues of, of uh, uh, gazetting and, and legal action, we need to know who, which are these municipalities that are blatantly defying to uh, uh, give progress a report. Your report is silent. Uh, uh, we don't know who, what are we dealing with. Uh, and we, we, we need dates like I've indicated uh, uh, of when were these report, uh, reports tabled to council. So if you can give us that information, Chair, it will clearly give us a sense and indication of exactly uh, what are we dealing with. But for now, from where I, I, I am sitting, uh, the report, that it, it's a skeleton without a, a, a flash. Please attach a, a flash into your skeleton. We acknowledge and welcome the progress uh, uh, made so far. But like I said, uh, Honorable Chairperson, Municipal Systems Act Section 106 is clear. It's having timeframes and it tells you what must be done when, uh, when you, you need to submit to NCOP and the president. But without that information, we're unable to, 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 to say indeed you are on the right track or in the right direction. Thank you so much, Honorable Chairperson. All right, thank you much, Honorable Hadebe. Um, Honorable Somia. Well, thank you very much, uh, uh, Chairperson. And um, 
I think let's appreciate the report is tabled by the MVC uh, Eastern Cape and his team. Uh, there, there are a few matters that I want to raise. I think uh, Honorable Hadeb has raised a number of uh, areas which I think are very critical for us to indulge uh, quite objectively uh, with the report. Uh, one area relates to uh, the fact that I think the department and the MEC are facing a huge challenge uh, in as far as to the areas investigated or still in progress for investigations and the tabling of such reports, uh, looking into a number of municipalities affected and the totality uh, of a municipal population um, uh, as, a, as a number of municipalities in the province. It, 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 it really raises a very grave concern uh, in as far as the implications uh, of uh, stability, um, the areas of uh, uh, fraud and corruption, the maladministration, um, that, that bedevils uh, the operational capability uh, of our municipalities in the, in the province. Um, if you could uh, categorize them uh, into um, uh, various platforms, you would find out that as they've done, they are municipalities uh, which uh, uh, have their own matters investigated, probably um, finalized investigations as they would uh, have those who are alleged appear in the courts. Uh, but the court, court system uh, uh, is somewhat uh, uh, acting in a very uh, slow pace into uh, resolving some of those uh, uh, cases. It, it might have been uh, a true chair uh, necessary, uh, even from our side, to look into how can we uh, seek some kind of a referral point uh, to ensure that um, uh, NPA uh, does um, have an understanding of such cases and how they could assist uh, around ensuring that we find a somewhat a resolute um, uh, approach uh, in as far as the finalization uh, of those matters, because we must be exemplary uh, in dealing with matters. And if such examples uh, don't uh, exist, uh, these matters are going to continue. And, and uh, even the MEC himself will be undermined uh, if uh, they will investigate for the sake of investigations uh, when they make follow-ups or they make referrals, uh, such referrals, um, take a long time uh, to find a resolution. The, 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 the second aspect uh, to those are those as well who are under investigation, which uh, uh, need as well to throw in a spanner on such matters, uh, probably um, uh, in terms of engaging law enforcement agencies in as far as those matters uh, are concerned. It's no use to um, somewhat people to find these kinds of faults um, and uh, we take what is termed in dealing with these matters. Uh, because even those who are alleged uh, would uh, find peace if their matters uh, are somewhat finalized and, 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 and uh, uh, be able to create a stable environment uh, in, in our municipalities. The third angle relates to um, a number of municipalities. I think Gehadeb has made reference to this. Uh, as we know, that there is a myriad, a pile uh, of investigations that have taken place um, within Nelson Mandela Bay, which are supposed to be known uh, within the department itself. Uh, it then pains one um, uh, to have a scanty referral uh, into matters that are deep uh, into a corrupt um, uh, uh, angle in as far as a Nelson Mandela Bay municipality is concerned. In the similar vein, if, if you look into OR Tambo district municipality, uh, those, uh, those matters have been just recently cited. The MEC himself um, has uh, penned uh, some investigation just recently uh, in that uh, municipality. Those matters ought to be cited for us to uh, be able uh, to 
have a permission of what needs to be done uh, in such uh, instances and be able to assist uh, at the level uh, of uh, uh, the uh, interventions which ought to take place in some of our critical municipalities, as you would know, uh, to enhance uh, the district development model um, to be somewhat sustained quite appropriately. Uh, so so uh, uh, the scantiness, uh, the lackluster uh, in presenting these matters uh, is itself a, a challenge because these are very critical, serious matters which ought to be responded to quite ac accordingly and be dealt with in terms of uh, assisting stability at a municipal level. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Okay, thank you very much. Are there, Babu Sobe, are there any other hands? I don't see hands in the yes, group. Yes, Chair, here's a hand. Uh, okay, Mam Tolasha, over to you. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Also want to thank the presentation from both the MEC and the accounting officers. Chair, some matters are being dealt with by the two honorable members. I just want to lift the fact that the MEC and the AJOD are raising a very serious matter for me where we have municipalities that don't have reports, where there was an investigation kind of, but to date don't have those reports or they as office or the department can access those reports. I just want to check from the Honorable MEC whether there's a problem with the legislation insofar as that is concerned, or there's a lack of working relationship between us and the councils themselves, or between us and the investigating uh, institutions. I'm raising this chairperson because I know for a fact that in the communities where these uh, things happened, there's never going to be stability until these investigations are done, completed, and whatever needs to be implemented, that's, that happens so that you can then get to say, we investigated, there were findings, there was implementation, and this is the situation. Because if you don't do that, Honorable MEC, as it is, it is, as it is the case now, you forever find people protesting about this or that. And sometimes some elements taking advantage of those difficulties, exploiting and create havoc in our areas where municipalities are, because they add other things. In fact, basically, the community had a concern of a particular report that was never completed. So I really would want to hear from them whether there's a problem with the legislation or there's a problem with the relationship between us and, and, and the municipalities themselves, or there's a problem between them and the investigating institutions. Okay. The MEC and the HOT are also raising the perception that is there in municipalities where they think uh, the, the COPTA shouldn't have business in, in, in intervening in the municipalities, especially where there are problems. Even there, Chair, I, I know it, it does happen and it creates a huge problem because it allows municipalities to do as they wish. And again, it creates an ex a perception in the, in, the, in the communities to say, we are a government that allows anarchy and nothing is done when that anarchy is taking place. I really would want to, maybe the, the MEC alone and the, and the HOT might not be able to give us, give us exact answers, but maybe we need to further discuss this matter, Chair, that now, with time, the municipalities now are created and they begin to be a no-go area insofar as oversight is concerned. And if you allow this to happen, it's going to create problems. I know one of the municipality, when the MEC was not even allowed to come and be part of the municipalities and so that he can advise properly. I'm saying, what, what else can we do? Because that is creating more problems making people not to account on the wrongdoings, but also further confirm the perception that is there to our people to say, I ungenza no ma yini, agakumdozo wenza lutola. The last one, Chair, 
the officials that are alleged to have done wrong, but which are hopping from each one municipality to the other. I heard MEC speaking very well about that. I hear that he's doing something. I guess there's a need for the entire three spheres of government to look at this chair and make sure that we resolve this because this is what also creates more problems because the one official moves from one municipality and leaving the allegation without having explained to them and get to another municipality and in there create more problems and then there's no stability once again there is whilst there is going to be a process of him accounting then again he jumps the ship he goes and, and joins something else I think even there, Chair, whilst I hear that this is a problem in the Eastern Cape, I get to know that it's a problem nationally. I think there's a need for us to come in here and copy notes and see how best can we make sure that we avoid this. Because even when it comes to oversight and then later on make sure people do, do answer on what they've done, as they are hoping from one inspire to another, we're not going to be able to do that. In fact, it exacerbates the problem that we are experiencing at the, at the, at the, at the, at the present moment. I agree, Chair, with the, the fact that we need a, a, a picture that tells the exact story like the MEC and the HOT is talking, but in their documents, it's not very, very clear. We need to know which municipality, who was the, 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 the official concern, what has happened, but also when did this take place? I guess, Chair, with this report, the, 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 the province led by the MEC, we need to also know what is their relationship with the investigating units so that we can get to hear whether they are in charge of the cases where the, I see, I saw that there is that report. But I'm, I'm afraid, Chair, it's like, as Honorable Somio, here and the problem is, Forever, there's not going to be stability in the communities, and we'll have criminals that take advantage of that and frust further frustrate our people and create chaos. Otherwise, I accept the report. We need a lot of detail. We need to hear exactly what did we do, Gobani, where is the person now? We need to get a situation where people are made to account on what they've done. I'm worried, uh, MEC, to you, Chairperson. Whether the decision about the or, or tambo of, of it being one of the municipalities that we are going to check whether the new concept is going to work. With all the challenges that we, we see, and we also you uh, explain, are we, are we able to make that municipality to be coherent such that it is able to implement all that we've discussed and agreed as government, as one of the, of the municipalities that needs to do that? Because we all know that a lot of people are staying around that municipality and they're expecting us to give the services that they deserve. But with the situation in that municipality, I'm afraid, and I really need to get to hear the assurance from the MEC on whether we are going to move any further insofar as that matter is concerned. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, Imam Tolasha. Honorable Hatte, we've got a small Anyana issue to raise. Yeah, yeah, yes, Chair. No, thank you so much. Uh, in relation to uh, this one uh, coalition uh, council, which is Nelson Mandela Bay, which happens to be one of the municipality where the department has indicated uh, not having records of investigation taking place. The question is, um, can the department give us an update on, on, on this municipality in relation to structures, whether or not they are all in place? The last time we checked, there, there was no mayor in that uh, municipality. Are the structures in place, the MPEC uh, structures, audit committees, structures that are responsible to ensuring that there's a, a consequence management and we prevent irregular, fruitless and wasteful expenditure. Uh, what, what's the latest status update in relation to Nelson Mandela Bay? Because without the, these structures in place, the Section 79 uh, committees uh, will be forever having reports that indicates we don't have records of uh, investigation within that municipality. So uh, a, a brief uh, uh, explanation in terms of the status of Nelson Mandela Bay would assist a great deal in us uh, effecting our oversight. Thank you, Chair. 
Um, thank you very much. I think uh, the salient points have been largely covered, uh, Honorable MEC, uh, and to say it's good that the confusion uh, of last week uh, has been clarified, wherein uh, there was a report that the, AG, uh, that the HOD uh, presented, which you had no sight of. So that clarity helps us because now this we know we are on the same uh, page. I think um, I must indicate to you, MEC, we will be uh, coming to the Eastern Cape, uh, I'm sure before the end of this year, to interact with some of these municipalities as part of our own ongoing um, oversight uh, into municipalities. Next week, we are into KZN. Um, and so we will be coming through. I'm sure you will receive a list of those. And so that's why the information is important that we are asking for, which will make, uh, help us make a determination which ones to prioritize. I think the initiative you have taken in so far as, uh, you know, the movement of people or the hobnobbing of people or the popcorn style like of people popping here and everywhere, having left a trail of destruction behind must be commended because as Omdulasha says, it has become a perennial headache across the public service in all three spheres of government. And we have to find ways and means um, to solve it. So I think uh, whilst of course, I believe it may be improved in that the time frames have to be uh, also bound to consequences in so far as dealing with those things are concerned, but it's a step in the right direction. And I think it's the first time we've heard something similar to that. So it will be good that we consult with you uh, on the initiative so that we, when we move ahead with our own, we can borrow from something which in one way or the other uh, is being actioned. Uh, so I would like to then uh, hand over to you uh, 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 MEC and the team for responses to the issues that uh, colleagues have raised, and then we will uh, begin a process of rounding up the meeting. Yeah, thank you, Honorable Chair and all of the members. Uh, I would like, uh, with your permission, Honorable Chair, request uh, the HOD and the team, which is uh, DDG Hoboji and uh, legal advisor, uh, Mr. Makumi. Uh, to, to provide responses, and after that, I'll then make my comments on the issues as well, my responses on the issues raised by honorable members. Okay, no, that's fine. Uh, MEC, you can proceed in that fashion. HOT, over to you. Thank you, honorable chair. Thanks for the questions. Um, I'll, 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 I'll first respond to the last issue asked by honorable Hadeb about Nelson Mandela, the structures there. The impact. Um, is, is having a challenge there because each time there is changes in terms of the vocal environment, also the impact is being changed. So the people that have been trained, now you have to train new people and, uh, and uh, it's, it's quite a challenge. So politics, uh, uh, challenges of politics there and reshuffling does have a serious impact on impact. The second thing is the, uh, uh, the audit committee. Uh, the audit committee in itself, their recommendations are not listened to. Uh, and that in itself, it's a challenge. And the third point that I just want to mention is that uh, on the issue relating to us not having uh, records here, it doesn't necessarily mean that because most investigations done at Nelson Mandela are at the hand of National Treasury. National Treasury did investigations by themselves and the reports are at National Treasury. So uh, the difficulty that time, some of the reports that National Treasury was handling are already with the hawks. Hence, uh, there were some arrests in that environment. So there are a number of reports there, but not conducted under the auspices because that's a metro, which is a municipality that is not delegated, but so they inv investigated and they handed them to Hawks by themselves. So we, we followed that through with National Treasure to understand what the situation is and probably would can request from them probably to those that are not sensitive at this point in time on investigation to get some information from them and extract uh, uh, the information at that uh, particular level. So I would, I would uh, then, uh, uh, Honorable Chair, with your permission, uh, uh, DDG Hoboji, if he has got something to add there, he, he should as well add. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Katie. Thank you. Good morning, um, Honorable Members. Um, I think uh, what I wanted to talk to uh, HOD is the issue of Nelson Mandela Bay Metro. 
And you have since covered that with the instability of the political leadership, they, it affects the Section 79 um, structures, as you have already indicated, your MPEG, your internal audit. But we're trying to we, we assist them continuously. I know for a fact we have been working with them, trying to assist them in terms of risk committee. But as the HOD has indicated, once there is a change in the, in the, in the council, then the, those are structures are affected, although uh, they are clearly indicated in the, in, the, in the Structures Act, what needs to be in place so that uh, there is accountability and consequence management. I think the other issues, uh, honorable chair and members, would need us to go back and get details as the, as the HOD has indicated. Yeah, I think I must just stop the, the most of the details that are, are required by the honorable committee would have to look at it uh, through the HOD and the MSD. Thank you, HOD. Thank you, Honorable Chair and members. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I think my starting note, uh, Honorable Chair, is to appreciate the feedback and questions we're getting uh, from, from honorable members. And uh, to, again, admit uh, the fact that uh, we needed to add more detail as uh, this detail in some cases, it, it is available uh, so that we can have uh, including names as we have uh, included names uh, in, in uh, so that detail, um, uh, we should have made it available. I'm committing that we're gonna be make, make, make it available uh, because whether you're talking about Emelaslene, we know that the CFO have resigned. We know that another employee was dismissed. And Great Kai, we know that uh, an employee has been on suspension. There is an issue because now it's almost a year that the employee has been suspended. And, uh, and uh, uh, there, there are other areas. We know that uh, the service provider, which did not complete work in Malasheni, uh, because the municipality wrote them a letter to say, we're going to blacklist you to national treasure so that you don't uh, do gov uh, business with government. They have since committed to come back and complete the project. So there are those details that I agree with one of the members that uh, we need to, to include uh, those details for, for the benefit of the committee. Uh, the other one, the, the, the Musa, uh, Hill Municipality uh, report, it has been tabled. Uh, it has been tabled, that report, and uh, people were complaining that they were not interviewed. We opened a space for them to submit those, um, you know, those uh, complaints, and then we did a supplementary report, which was again tabled in October. And, uh, and uh, the report was subsequently adopted by council. But the issue now is for council to put together an ad hoc committee report, uh, ad, co ad hoc committee of council so that it develop an action plan. We committed to support them. But now they are at that stage where there is a sort of, a, a, you know, some efforts to frustrate that process going forward as part of uh, the points that, uh, that, are, that I'm raising. Perhaps let me lift, I think uh, it relates to the point raised by uh, Honorable Tolashe and some of, of the details, uh, I mean, the delays that we encounter. Uh, this, that, this point that I'm going to be making, I make, uh, you know, every time uh, to say that uh, COCTA, uh, we aren't going to solve political problems administratively. That is why I've been calling upon uh, political parties, including my organization, so that the political problems that are there Political parties must resolve the political problems because it's not for COCTA to resolve political problems. And the pushback that we're getting, uh, for instance, Nelson Mandela, the AG, before AG was pushed back there, a threatening letter was, 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 was just pushed under the door. The AG team had to leave the Nelson Mandela in the last uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 audit process. And uh, they then even went to court uh, blocking uh, the issuing of uh, the audit outcome. And uh, before that, a multidisciplinary team constituted of national treasurer, provincial treasurer, COCTA, national and province, SALGA and MESA of administrators went there to do an assessment so that we can provide a proper support. That team was pushed back. And uh, after that, it was, uh, it was the AG pushed back. So indicative of an, an existing political problem, which will not be solved by COCTA, but political parties must resolve political problems so that administratively we can come in and resolve these problems as, 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 as government. And um, that's, I think that's an overriding point that I would want, uh, I would want to, to, to raise on our chair. And that uh, the support to the committee, Honorable Somio, the support of the committee would be really welcomed uh, you know, uh, in this regard. 
as so that this, the committee can support us as we as as, as we do this work. And uh, in our chamber, we have completed our own investigation there on the issue of um, you know uh, that's a detail that we needed to put on the issue uh, of uh, you know uh, of irregular expenditure, which is close to uh, you know a billion. We have completed that part, but we have not tabled yet the report, and therefore. Uh, the detail would have been necessitated that uh, we, we 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 provide them once it is tabled in council, uh, you know the report. But you will not get there. Up and still, you stabilize the municipality. Uh, again, there is a whole issue of uh, you know factionalism and politics that I play there. And the minister came down, and uh, we have engaged with the political leadership. And some of the concessions that we we we're making as Cocta, you know. Uh, because sometimes there is total disregard of rule of law and due process, and we're making concessions because one of the issues uh, that 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 were delaying our intervention there, because uh, the the municipal manager has been suspended, the 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 the, 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 the municipality requested that we send an acting uh, MM, and uh, as part of our practice, we send a technical team to do an assessment so that we can do. Uh, terms of reference for an acting MM supported by three other uh, officials to go at uh, uh, budget and treasury, at uh, infrastructure, at corporate services, a team of four led by an acting, uh, you know, a, a official to act as an MM. The starting point, we use the, 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 that assessment to do terms of reference. The starting point is for them to reject the terms of reference, to say Cocta cannot do terms of reference for, for us as council will do our own. So the strange concessions that we're making these days is to agree on their terms in terms of that they must give their terms of reference because we want to get into that space because some of this work that we must do will not do it from outside and therefore this thing works only if it's anchored on the principles uh, of cooperative governance and uh, of a better understanding of the fact that you know, there is the interdependentness and interrelatedness uh, of these fears and therefore, if municipalities present themselves as if there is an absolute, you know, autonomy in terms of, uh, you know, the, 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 the municipalities, it's going to be a big problem. It's going to be a, a pushback. And in the main, it's informed by politics. And that will not be solved by COCTA, but will be solved by political parties, which have been challenging them time and again, as I said, including my organization, to say if they've got problems in municipal, they must go and solve those problems so that we as COCTA, and we are in one, uh, you know, ab about that issue. The matter is that it must be, it must be actioned, uh, you know, with, 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 with determination. Uh, that's, the, that's the issue about, uh, about uh, you know, uh, 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 OR Tango. And uh, the visit of the committee uh, will have to prepare uh, as COCTA to ensure that uh, we are available in all those visits so that the committee can can access uh, whatever information and, and ask us any you know uh, questions uh, that uh, we might be required to to to, to answer during uh, uh, the, the, those visits. The last point on our chair is to say, we are again showing these problems because uh, if you see that uh, a municipal manager has left municipal uh, municipality a uh, leaving this trail of destruction. Then I write to them, I wrote them this letter to the municipality. I say to them, did so and so during the time of the interview in your municipality disclose that he or she was investigated for these allegations? The municipality, instead of being concerned about that, they would say, no, we've asked the, uh, the, 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 the manager concerned. Uh, he or she says, no, yeah, he, is not, he or she is not aware that she's not being investigated. Instead of being preoccupied, to to, what are the allegations about? So that we can make them to account. In many instances, these people were in fact interviewed and some did not cooperate. But all of a sudden, they claim that they don't know that they're being investigated. And the municipalities where they are located are not worried about that governance issue because these are people that are, you know, holding public power, you know, that is borrowed at a responsible level. And therefore, the issue of uh, surety that uh, this uh, you know, pass is in, is in clean hands, so to speak, is quite critical for the municipalities. But you don't get them into that space. They close rank with the relevant uh, people. So those are some of the standing blocks we're getting. So, Honorable Chair, 
thanks for this opportunity. I, I commit that uh, we, we, we will provide this detail uh, to the committee and look forward uh, to the visit of the committee. Uh, thanks, Chair. All right. No, thank you very much, uh, MSC. Colleagues, are there any other further questions or comments that you'd like to make? All right. Let me see. I think let us take yeah. this opportunity. All right, Honorable Hart, Debbie, you may proceed. Yes, Chair. No, thanks. I, I take and welcome the response of, uh, by the MEC and the HOD that some of the information will be forwarded to us. Uh, but I was hoping that I think some of the information, Chair, is readily available at their disposal. Here we're talking about 39 municipalities in Eastern Cape. And um, not all of them, uh, uh, we have issues where reports have been concluded. We were specific in our request, Chair, at least give us the date when these reports were tabled. Unless you're saying that information is not readily available. I was hoping that such information is easily accessible, which all municipalities right. are defiant. No. No, 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 that's fine. Let, 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 let's put that point in lead so that we can establish that now from the team that is here. Yeah. Uh, Uti, are those dates and reports really available now? Okay, yeah, because I need to know. Remember, we will be going to Eastern Cape. So we, we, our focus will be prioritized as per the cases. So if there are municipalities that are defiant, uh, when did you send letters to them requesting action plan? a progress on action plan. If that's not All already right. available, I, I will accept. But I thought these issues are at your disposal. All right, MEC, uh, HOD, uh, let, let's get a, a response to that. HOD. Honorable MEC, I would, uh, honorable chair, for, for accuracy and thoroughness, the information is, is, is here on my other gadget, but uh, it, for accuracy purposes, can I request that uh, we please submit that? We can do it today so that we cannot make mistakes. We please submit that to the committee today. All right. Uh, Honorable Hattie, are you amicable to that? If you can receive okay, the close of business. Yeah, no, no. I'm, because, I'm, yeah. Okay. It's, no, that's fine. If we yeah, can no, receive I, it by close of business today. Yeah. Let me not be difficult, but I think in future, such uh, uh, information, especially if it's part of your report, I think it goes without saying, when you say to us, you have sent a letter and you're not telling me the date, you are limiting me uh, uh, the information and to understand the gravity of the matter. So in future, when you said you submitted something, tell, tell me when did you submit? And if they're not responding, what then did you do to, 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 to push for them to give you such information so that we must not probe you to give us answers as if you are uh, economical with the truth. We don't want to do that. And I'm not saying you, uh, you did that deliberately uh, and don't get me wrong, uh, uh, leadership. Thank you. Okay. All right, no, that's fine. I think that point uh, suffices that information must always be readily available. That goes uh, without saying. Uh, and I think that that point is well captured by uh, the MEC and his team. Um, so MEC, let us take this opportunity to thank you, understanding that uh, we are going to be sending you further information for the purposes of the identification of municipalities we will want to meet with on these matters, and also at the same time to make a determination as to where we will be uh, meeting uh, in the Eastern Cape uh, for the purposes of calling uh, the municipalities. So our, our, our staff and your staff will be in contact over the next week or two uh, as we um, seek to, to bring this matter to a conclusion. We, we wanted to meet so that we can best understand uh, the situation. And so the information that members require is precisely for that reason. Uh, so that uh, we can we, we can be able to prepare accor accordingly. Uh, and I think the information given today uh, helps us in that regard. So colleagues, in the absence of further 
uh, interactions and questions. Uh, the meeting is not ending. It will be continuing over the next uh, a, a few, few, few weeks as we prepare to go to the Eastern Cape and MEC. Uh, we will be requesting information uh, as and when uh, we require it. Let me take this opportunity to thank you and your team. And um, we will be in touch. Colleagues, the sitting is at three for questions to the Peace and Security Cluster this afternoon. Um, and so I think we've had a long day uh, today. Thank you very much for your commitment and uh, your hard work today. Let us then meet uh, next week. Uh, and of course, we are in Guazlu Natal from Friday uh, through Sunday for an oversight visit to interact uh, with municipalities. Uh, in the absence of any other business, the meeting stands adjourned. And thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Upe, upe, national yeah, okay. I'm gonna mute all of you. National anarchist. National anarchist. National anarchist. Thanks, thanks, Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>